100 Black Men of Atlanta. The Annual Stakeholders and Community Briefing, presented by The Coca-Cola Company. Featuring Errol Davis, Superintendent of Atlanta Public Schools. So uh, now, as you all continue to enjoy lunch and dessert, it's my honor to introduce our speaker today, Mr. Errol B. Davis, Jr. He is just about, is it official, former? Can I officially say, for, not yet. Okay, school ends on Friday. Probably have a couple of work days left. So he is almost the former superintendent of Atlanta Public Schools from his very first day on the job until today. And remember, he came out of retirement for this. He's been working at a fast and furious pace to help make the school system a stronger, better system for our students in Atlanta. The current chair of the Atlanta Board of Education, Courtney English, uh, likened Errol's decision to lead Atlanta schools to a firefighter's decision to run into a burning building. Uh, but then someone added that the building was loaded with dynamite. He certainly stepped in at a very interesting time, if you all remember. Here are some interesting facts about his vast and unique experience. Prior to joining Atlanta Public Schools, he led the University System of Georgia as its chancellor for five years. He also led an energy holding company, Alliant Energy Corps, as its CEO for eight years. He has served in several executive leadership positions at Wisconsin Power and Light. For 20 years, he's also served on several corporate boards, such as General Motors, Union Pacific, and British Petro Petroleum better known to us consumers as BP. In addition, to, uh, in addition, Mr. Davis and his wife, Elaine, sitting there, hi, have established a family foundation which makes annual grants to students. And clearly he, in his current role, he's in his current role because he believes in the power of education. He cares very deeply about children and wishes to make a real difference in Atlanta. So please, uh, offering the state of Atlanta public schools, please welcome the former superintendent, soon to be former superintendent of Atlanta public schools, Mr. Errol Davis. Thank you very much, uh, Javita, for that uh, introduction. Uh, I certainly appreciate uh, the opportunity to spend a little time with you today, and it is going to be uh, a little time. I have people holding signs. I don't have time for my warm-up jokes, uh, as I normally do uh, today. Uh, as Javita mentioned, I am in the midst of a retirement transition and if you don't know what that means when you retire from a high profile uh, public job it means you go from who's who to who's he to who cares <laughs> uh, actually i'm scheduled to leave to be at the uh, end of june but depending upon how my board members receive my remarks today there are many of them uh, in the audience it may be sooner uh, than that so um as she mentioned, as I was finishing up my uh, second job after retire my second retirement uh, from the University System of Georgia back in uh, 2011, I was asked to serve briefly uh, as interim superintendent of APS, and I had a very specific uh, assignment, and that was just uh, stay for three months. Uh, until the board hired a new superintendent. Now, uh, I haven't really counted whether it's really past three months, but I think it's um, two years, 10 months, 20 days, 12 hours, and uh, make that 13 hours uh, and 10 minutes uh, right now. People ask me all the time, uh, why did you take this job? Because they see all the fun I'm having on television uh, all the time. Uh, and, you know, they say, you know, you work for about four decades uh, already. And I, somebody mentioned that they were old because they graduated from high school in 1965. I graduated in 1961. I'm going to point that out. Uh, but they said to me, you know, surely the fear uh, of irrelevance that most retiring CEOs have really didn't compel you to do this job, did it? Uh, and the answer is no. Uh, I took the job as a favor, uh, and I will not mention the person who asked me uh, that favor. We're no longer on speaking terms. Uh, but <laughs> that is not, however, why I stayed. Uh, I stayed very simply because it is hard work, but work worth doing. Uh, it is noble work. 
And you, what you saw today in front of this stage, uh, what you read about really is the products uh, of our work and the reason we do uh, the work. But this job I have is not a job that you can do alone. Uh, you need a lot of help uh, to do it successfully. And so I do want to spend some time thanking Henry, Kelly, and John Grant, and the members of the 100 for their steadfast uh, support uh, for APS students. And I also want to thank the countless other supporters and partners, not only in this room, but across uh, the city and nation uh, as well. I have appreciated your support, I have appreciated uh, your advocacy, and certainly I have appreciated uh, your partnerships. Uh, I was asked to do a quick, again quick, uh, exit interview here. Now generally when you have an exit interview, you have two choices. Um, you can either keep it honest, or you can keep it rosy just in case you need to come back. <laughs> I do not need to come back. <laughs> so here are the uh, four quick questions. Uh, question one was, what did I encounter? And I didn't make these up. John actually gave them to me. Uh, what did I encounter upon entering APS? Now, I'm not going to rehash too much of our uh, painful past, but I would point out that uh, when I walked in the door, the school system was, in fact, already uh, on probation. It was uh, at facing a loss uh, of accreditation, not because of academic performance, but because of the dysfunctionality uh, of the board at that time. Uh, now, to, if that wasn't bad enough, on the third day uh, on the job, I received an 800-page uh, report from a special prosecutor uh, detailing cheating on the 2009 and before CRCT uh, test, uh, all 800 pages uh, of it. Uh, and immediately, of course, Jovita and her colleagues um, profiled this around the world. Um, uh, even Al Jazeera had a story uh, on it. Uh, and Atlanta, unfortunately, at the time, became the home of the largest cheating scandal in U.S. Uh, educational uh, history. Uh, that wasn't the only thing I found. Uh, I often use the term uh, empty suit. Uh, because there were a lot of weak or non-existent systems uh, to manage the risks uh, that we faced uh, as a system. There were very limited feedback mechanisms. There were multiple evaluation systems, few of whom, which uh, were working at all well. And there was a stunningly inadequate internal control uh, system. Well, that was inside the building. Now, outside, I had an unhappy public, uh, as you might imagine, when your school system has been threatened uh, with loss of accreditation. Uh, there were lots of conversations about ethics, but there were also a lot of heated and passionate conversations to the new superintendent about equity. Uh, what I found was that APS was a two-school system. Uh, separated by race and class and other accidents uh, of birth. But on the good side, I also found countless students, employees, and community partners working quietly, very determined to disprove uh, every salacious headline uh, and every allegation and every finding uh, in the report. And I want to say it is uh, to them uh, that we should pay tribute. They own a piece of the system's turnaround. That was question one. Question two, what challenges did we overcome? Uh, well, we managed uh, after a year to get uh, our accreditation back. Uh, we averted, uh, and this was a little work, having the entire school board removed. Now, I should say about a year later, I had second thoughts uh, on that one. Uh, we managed through uh, the cheating crisis. Unfortunately, we had to separate about 200 people uh, from the system, but we've set up anonymous hotlines so that people can report unethical behavior. We have automatic investigation triggers in place when test scores move uh, too much uh, in too short a period of time. We have annual ethics training and certification, and it is now a condition of employment 
uh, that you take that training uh, at APS. Uh, and we have stronger safeguards in place uh, around the handling of some of our, and storage of some of our sensitive uh, test material. Now, we also have, over the, the last three years, a major redistricting. I, I didn't need that uh, either, uh, sort of like having a third armpit. Uh, but um, we went through this. Uh, we closed seven schools. Uh, we put all of the high schools in clear clusters uh, across the city for the various first time, uh, for the first time. We also made a lot of progress on the fiscal side of the house. We identified funding sources that hadn't given to uh, the system in over a decade. Uh, we got new revenues into the system. Uh, we've addressed a lot of our cost issues and we are fiscally in a much better place uh, today. Uh, but most of all, and I was saving the best for last, our academic outcomes are changing. They're changing rapidly and they're changing positively. Our test scores are rising faster than the state averages. Uh, our on-time four-year graduation rate has gone from 51% to 59%. Our overall dropout rate, <clears throat> our dropout rate is, has gone from 11.1% to 8.5%. That means 300 fewer students are dropping out uh, each year. There were some comments earlier today about black males. Black males drop out at a greater rate. Their rate is going down as well. It was 13.3%, it's now down to 10.7. That's 150 black males that are not dropping out. This is the hard work worth doing. Uh, and I really, and the team we put together, could not have demonstrated improvement during these really difficult uh, times uh, without the dedicated teachers, principals, and staff, also our dedicated senior cabinet members, uh, and other APS leaders, a number of whom are here today, and I would ask them uh, to stand, and please join me uh, in thanking them uh, for their efforts over the last three years. You know that we put them far away from the podium so they couldn't throw uh, things uh, at, at this point. Uh, question three, what are some key lessons that you either learned or confirmed? Uh, let me say first that in spite of all we've done, we haven't done enough. There are still too many dropouts and there are not enough uh, on-time graduates, uh, but we wrestle with a lot of things. One of the things we wrestle with is the concept of engagement versus involvement. Our best schools have parental engagement. But one of the challenges that I ran into constantly is for some strange reason, uh, many people in the public think this is easy to educate a, a child, that all, they went to a seminar after all, or, or they read an article, uh, and they became instant experts. And I, you know, I would ask people, you know, when you go to your doctor, do you tell them where to cut? Uh, when you go to your accountant, do you tell them how to fill out the forms, uh, what to put on the forms, and when to file uh, the forms? Uh, when you go to the dentist, do you tell them how to hold the drill? Uh, but, you know, for some reason, people think they can just come and tell some of the most highly educated people in America exactly what to do. Uh, on an ongoing basis. And then when things don't work out, of course, uh, it's teachers' fault. Uh, and let me say something for our teachers, they're wonderful people. Uh, education is the only industry in America, the only industry where failure is blamed on the workers. The only one. Everywhere else it's blamed on the people on whom it should be blamed, and that's the people at the top, leadership. All problems are leadership problems, all failures are leadership failures. I believe that uh, very strongly. Uh, and so there is certainly a place for engagement. We should tell you what you should expect. Uh, you should hold us accountable. Uh, but I tell everybody, let the teachers teach, please. There are other lessons uh, that we learned. Um, one is do the right thing as quickly uh, as you can. Try and understand the history, try and understand the politics, but do the right thing. 
Also learn the difference between compromise, which is an okay thing to do, and appeasement, which is not an okay thing uh, to do. Uh, we also learned that you should not put inept people in positions just to pacify adults while they're doing harm to children. You should listen to the community, listen to experts, and make sure that your work is research driven, uh, but you also should just ignore the noise uh, because there will be a lot of it. You should appreciate that equitable does not necessarily mean equal. It certainly does not. Uh, equitable means we should make the appropriate responses to disparate needs. And as I also am fond of telling everyone in the building, remember bad news does not get better with time. Just put it on the table and move on. Now my fourth and final uh, exit interview question is what is the APS that is being handed over uh, to the next superintendent. And I'm really encouraged uh, by our new board. I'm really encouraged uh, by the new superintendent. Uh, this job can be a thousand percent uh, more productive when board members uh, and the superintendent uh, work together, uh, when board members understand uh, that and respect their very powerful roles as policymakers and as advocates uh, for children, not for adults. Uh, I have spent a number of hours already uh, with the incoming superintendent, uh, Dr. Kerstarfin. Uh, she's a very impressive young woman. Uh, I say young since she's about the same age as uh, my son, um, and, but she's still older than a few people on the school board uh, as well. <laughs> she is being handed an APS where there are really more roads to cover, where there, where there are ongoing academic disparities, as I noted, along the lines of race, class, and other circumstances of birth. She is inheriting an organization that is closer to, but has not yet achieved what we call the four E's of excellence, ethics, equity, and engagement across all, not just some, uh, of our schools. Uh, she will have a system that has a long list of passionate advocates uh, who have an insatiable desire for the superintendent to be everywhere all the time, to be publicly visible, while at the same time being privately productive. It's difficult uh, to do, I assure you. Uh, most of all, she's being handed an APS that can now put its past in the past uh, and focus on future greatness. If you ask me, is APS an organization of now 100% honest employees, I will say no, no organization is. But I will tell you that it is an organization where it is now a lot more difficult for unethical individuals to thrive. Um, the state of APS is simply this, it's a place where amazing students, parents, and partners uh, surrounded by committed and talented employees, especially our teachers and principals, have come together uh, in the name of education is a place that I believe is truly poised uh, for greatness, but only, only if everyone inside this room, inside the city, inside our schoolhouses uh, and classrooms keep children, not adults, at the center stage. And I say that based on experience over the last three years, children, not adults, should be our focus. So in closing, let me thank you and let me thank the board members, uh, both past and present, for entrusting me uh, with your Atlanta public school system. Uh, it was both an honor uh, and a privilege. And whenever you get to the microphone, of course, you have to acknowledge your family. Uh, and I want to do that. I want to thank first my wife, Elaine. Would you stand up, uh, please? Elaine. Uh, this is my. Uh, junior high school sweetheart. We've been married 46 years uh, now. And in, in continuing in our family's legacy uh, of service is my daughter, uh, Whitney, who graduated last weekend from Georgia State with a degree in social work. Whitney, please stand. Yeah. And following in her footsteps uh, at Georgia State, uh, will be my granddaughter, Alexis, who was so profoundly impacted by a visit 
uh, to a special needs education class that she will be majoring uh, in special needs education at Georgia State this fall. Alexis, please stand. Yeah. Thank you all for putting up with me for the last uh, three years or so. And so, uh, finally, my only advice, because uh, advice is always worth what you paid uh, for it, uh, and that is to please stay engaged. Our school system and our children uh, continue to need you. They really do. They continue to need all of you. They continue to need the mentoring programs. They continue to need uh, the scholarship programs. They continue to need uh, your support. Uh, and they must have all of that if we are uh, to achieve the excellence that I truly believe is within our grasp. Again, thank you very much.